Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the 2022 AP Chemistry Free Response Exam number three, and this was the exam that was delivered on May 2nd, 2022. Uh, this is the third question, the last of those 10-point problems. If you want to get more information, go to MrAiden.com, and MrAiden.com is where, if you're a teacher, you're a student, you want more information, you want more free response questions, more mobile choice questions, more resources, uh, it's there at a low price. So let's get to this exam. The first question starts off with a basic electron configuration of the ground state of aluminum. So you look on your periodic table, we got 1s2, we got 2s2, we got 2p6, we got 3s2, and we got 3p1, and that is the ground state electron configuration of aluminum. And the second question is a justify your answer. It's an explain your answer. So remember, with any kind of justify or explain, we want to do a claim in evidence and a reason. And think about it. Uh, our claim is already given to us. We know the claim. What is the claim? The claim is the radius of the aluminum atom is larger than the radius of the aluminum plus three ion. And so they've already given me the claim. But now we want evidence. Where do we go for our evidence? Our evidence comes from our periodic table. We need to be talking about the what is similar, what is different. And we know that an aluminum atom and an aluminum plus three ion both have the same, the same number of protons, which means both will have similar nuclear charges. But what is the big difference is aluminum plus three, aluminum plus three, the ion will lose three electrons from the 3s2, I'm gonna do 3s2, 3p1 subshells. Uh, this reduces the ion's radius to only contain, to only contain electrons in the n equals one and n equals two principal quantum, quantum energy levels. And so what does that mean? That means that what is the reason, what is the reason why then is these valence electrons of the aluminum ion are closer to the nucleus than the valence electrons of a ground state aluminum atom that has its valence electrons in the n equals three electron shell. And so that is a full orb discussion of why the aluminum atom is larger than the aluminum plus three radius. That was the claim. The evidence goes right to the, where are the valence electrons? Uh, what principal quantum energy levels are the valence electrons in? And then what is the reason? Is those valence electrons of aluminum are closer to the nucleus than the valence electrons of the ground state of aluminum. And that is a full orb claim evidence reason for that answer, okay? Now it says the student plans to combine solid aluminum with aqueous silver ions. They're having us prepare Think about what they're doing here is they're preparing 200 mils of an aqueous solution of silver nitrate. And they're asking the student to, uh, to, to write their procedure, basically. And what is the first thing they give us is use weighing paper to measure the determined mass of solid AgNO3 on a balance. Okay. And so now we're going to go to number two. And remember, this is kind of an open-ended question. And so we want to, there's a little bit different avenues we could roll with this, but uh, the second thing the student is going to do is they're going to place the solid AgNO3 that was measured, and you might say carefully, into a 200 milliliter volumetric flask. Because that volumetric flask does one thing in life. It is going to... Um, it is going to measure exactly 200 milliliters of 
the solution. Okay, and then what is going to be happening in number three? Number three is we're going to. Okay, now why would I put in 175 milliliters? Is Uh, we bring it to volume. Okay, so number four, I'm going to put swirl the 200 milliliter volumetric flask to ensure the AgNO3 solid dissolves completely. We want to make sure we dissolve that completely. And then last is number five. We don't have to use all the spaces. So number five, what are we going to do in number five? We're going to fill to volume uh, with DI water uh, to for the 200 milliliter volumetric flask. And we're going to invert and mix. Okay, And that is a good procedure for the student. Putting the AgNO3 in the 200 ml volumetric flask, put enough water in in order to dissolve it, you swirl, you dissolve completely, fill to the line, fill to the meniscus, fill to volume is a chemist way of putting it for the solution. And that's how we make our solution. Now we have a little particle diagram going on here, and the particle diagram is going to be really important if you count the number of particles. Take a look at the amount of aluminum solid. We have one, two, three, four. And what we want to do is this, is we want to kind of do an ice chart here. Okay, that is how I think about doing these problems. We have three Ag plus in equilibrium, where it's going forward into aluminum Al plus three plus 3Al solid, okay? And so let's think about initial change equilibrium, or the end per se. We have four aluminum particles here. How many Ag plus ones do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many of everything else do we have? We have zero and zero. Now, what do they tell us at the end or at equilibrium? When it comes to the end, we know we have two aluminum particles left. So remember, your change is your molar ratio. And I'm going to put this in green. Our change is our molar ratio, which means two particles decrease. This is a one to three ratio. For every two particles we decrease, we decrease six. Again, we're keeping with the ratio. Aluminum to aluminum plus three is a one to one ratio. So for every two we go down, we're going to go up two. Again, the aluminum plus one and the aluminum solid is a three to three ratio. For every six we go down, we're going to go up six. So at equilibrium, we're going to have eight minus six is two particles left, two particles of the aluminum plus three, and six particles. We have a conservation of matter. We have a conservation of matter. So what's going to happen? I have six particles of aluminum solid. Aluminum solid. Sorry, not aluminum solid. Ag solid. This is Ag, my bad. So six particles of, of Ag solid. Ag solid is much bigger, so we got Ag. We got Ag. It's a solid. Gravity is going to be affecting it. It's probably going to plate a little bit on the aluminum. We got these big particles, Ag solid. Okay. Now, how much Ag plus one do we have? Ag plus one. We only have two particles of that Ag plus one, and that's going to be in the solution is Ag plus one. And we also have, we have aluminum plus three. How many aluminum plus threes? We have two aluminum plus threes. You can see how that aluminum plus three. And we have a conservation of matter. We have a conservation of charges. We have everything perfect in my diagram, in my particle level diagram. Uh, let's keep going. We're going to try to find our standard reduction, our, uh, using the standard reduction potentials, we're going to calculate our standard cell potential, our E. And so think about it, our aluminum plus 3, we're multiplying this one by 3, but remember, this is not per mole, so we don't multiply that. We have uh, Ag plus 1, Ag plus 1, uh, you can see in my reactants, we multiply by 3, but we don't multiply the voltage by 3, it's not per mole. So we're going to keep this the same, which means if we do not flip that, that is the cathode, and that is the reduction. That is the thing that's being reduced, and which means that is also gaining electrons, which means we're going to have to flip the aluminum. You can see the aluminum solids over here, aluminum solids over here. We're going to have to flip this. 
the reaction that I flip is the anode, isn't it? And it is the oxidation, which means we're losing electrons for oxidation. And so this voltage will be flipped to positive 1.66 volts. So we have positive 1.66 volts plus positive 0.80 volts, and that ends up becoming a total voltage of 2.46, positive 2.46 volts. That is the standard cell potential. And when E is positive, that means this reaction is thermodynamically favorable. The delta G is going to be negative. And what do you know? What's the next thing they asked me to do is can I figure out what the delta G is? Will my delta G be positive, negative, or zero? So remember, the first thing we want is our claim, don't we? We want our claim. And so let's, uh, let's, let's write this out. And uh, we'll write this out. I'll type this out so that you can actually understand it. So what is the claim? The claim is the delta G, and the delta G will be something. Will it be positive, negative, or zero? That's my claim. What is my evidence? My evidence, I'm going to go to my equation. The delta G equals negative NFE, negative NFE. And you can see the N is the number of electrons. The F is Faraday's constant, which means the E is going to be positive. So if you can see, uh, uh, the E, the standard cell potential, is equal to positive 2.46 volts and therefore uh, therefore the delta G will be a negative value okay and what is the reason let's do this reason uh, if the E is a positive value the reaction is thermodynamically favorable which means also the delta D is negative for a favorable reaction as well. And so right away, we're going to fill in our little slot here is the delta G will be negative. Again, I'm looking to do anytime justify your answer. I'm doing claim, evidence, and reason. And this, this problem number three finishes out with this. Once the reaction appears to stop progressing, would the change in the free energy, the delta G, be positive, negative, or zero? Again, justify your answer. So what do I want? I want a claim, I want an evidence, and a reason. So let's go to claim. What is my claim? Is uh, the delta G will be something. It'll be positive, negative, or, or zero. Let's go to the evidence. Let's go to the evidence. Um, as, the, as the reaction proceeds, uh, st stops progressing, stops progressing. The E or voltage produced would be equal to zero, okay? There would be no more electrons or moles of electrons being transferred in this reaction. Uh, th therefore, the reaction would be at chemical equilibrium, or you could say dynamic equilibrium, which means the the reason is uh, if, uh, because of the equation, delta G equals negative NFE, if there is no more, no more transfer of electrons, and therefore no E, or E is equal to zero, then delta G equals zero. And that is my claim. My claim is my delta G will be equal to zero, okay? And so what do you know? We use claim, evidence, and we use reason to do this. And that was question number three on the 2022 AP Chemistry Free Response. Hope that helped. Check all my other stuff at www.mrayton.com and hope this helped. See you guys. Bye.